the Q5 is the best selling car in the Audi lineup. And after a week with this thing, it is quite quirky, but it's easy to see why these things are so popular. Let's go ahead and take a look. Driving this car around for the last week has really been where this thing has surprised me the most. It's got an Audi badge, so you expect luxury with some sportiness to it. It's not the full on SQ5, so not super sporty driving, um, but you still, it's still an Audi, so you expect a little bit of that. But I didn't really think that it was gonna execute both of those things quite as well as it does. So first the luxury part, because that's kind of what comes first here, especially in the, the regular Q5. So it rides really nicely, it rides very smoothly, even on these big 20s. Very quiet in here, road noise, not bad at all. Wind noise, not bad at all. Engine noise, very quiet. Even if I pop it into dynamic mode, ring it way out, still, you can't really hear the engine too much. Very surprised by how quiet it is. And it's got all of the safety features that you come to expect here in a luxury brand. Adaptive Cruise is now standard, new for 2023. That works well. It's got the lane keep assist, which will kind of shove you back into your lane if you start to get out of your lane. Works well, it is a little bit aggressive, but you can tone that down if you don't want it to be quite so aggressive, or you can just turn it off completely if you're not into it. That's just over here on the stock, turn that off nice and easily. Blind spot monitoring is called side assist in Audi speak, so that's something to watch out for. Um, but again, it has that, and it's got the pre-collision, the pedestrian monitoring, the rear cross traffic. It's got all of that and the 360 camera. Just really easy to drive, really nice daily driver. But then what surprised me even more was the fact that I could pop it into that dynamic mode and actually kind of push on it a little bit. And it kind of, it actually can be really fun to drive and it handles much better than I expected because I don't generally expect crossovers to handle super well. But let's back up a little bit before we get into the dynamics. So there are three different engine options here. If you option the TFSI 40, means you get a two liter turbocharged four cylinder and that's gonna make about 201 horsepower. If you go for the 45 TFSI, that's the one we have here, 261 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque. If you get the 55E, that's gonna be your plug-in hybrid. That's gonna be up in the 300s, the mid 300s in terms of horsepower. Or if you go the full-on SQ5, it's gonna give you the six cylinder and that one will again be up in the 300s, but you don't get the plug-in hybrid, just a six cylinder with turbos. And we've got a seven speed dual clutch in this one. You get the eight speed transmission if you're up in the SQ5. This one is the seven speed dual clutch though, and it's very quick to respond, can be aggressive when you want it to be, can actually do really well in traffic when you want it to be. A lot of times with a dual clutch transmission, it'd be a little bit jerky and stop and go have not had that issue here. The throttle does have a little bit of lag in terms of responsiveness, as well as you've got a little bit of turbo lag. Then once it comes on, it really kicks and the lag's not too bad. It's, a, you know, it's about what you would expect from a modern turbo engine, just about a second of lag and then boom, you are off to the races. And it can move really well, especially for a crossover and an all-wheel drive crossover. So it's got a little bit of extra weight to it as well, but still moves really nicely. Now, what I really didn't expect here was that it actually handles really well. You can throw this thing through corners and it doesn't roll too much. It will handle those corners really nicely. It'll come out very confidently. And because it has this great seven-speed dual clutch transmission that is really pretty well known throughout the Vol Volkswagen group here. It responds really nicely. You've got these paddle shifters here that will respond quickly to your inputs. You can ring it out if you want. And like I said, it'll still be quiet, but it'll give you that extra power. You've got the control. Really fun to ring out, really fun to throw through some corners. Now note, if you do want to use those paddle shifters, you're going to want to pop that into your S mode down here, which is on your shifter. Uh, otherwise, it's going to start kicking you back into automatic mode. Now, aside from that S mode that I mentioned here that's on the gear shift, I mentioned the dynamic mode as well. So you've got actually, so you've got an off-road mode, you've got a comfort mode, you've got a dynamic mode, then you've got an individual mode which where you can 
set up exactly how you want it to be. There are only two settings in there, but you can set that as you would like. And then there's an auto mode where it'll kind of pick and choose based on the situation, you know, what settings it thinks that you need to be in. But generally speaking, very nice to drive when you want it to be and very fun to drive when you want it to be. But that really surprised me a lot. Now with all the driver assistance features and safety features and all of that, there are quite a few symbols that pop up. If you have the heads up display option like I do on this one, or, it, as, or if you don't, then it'll just be down here in the gauge cluster. There's like a green foot with an arrow, which means take your foot off the gas and you can get a little bit better fuel economy if you just coast a little bit. I'm averaging 22 to 23 miles per gallon with mixed city and highway, so not great fuel economy. You trade that off for a little bit of extra fun. And then there's like a yellow circle uh, with a dotted line. And then there's an exclamation point if you're driving too close to somebody. There's just a lot of symbols that you're gonna have to sort of figure out what those things mean. Not super intuitive necessarily, but once you know what they are, no big deal. And it's not like blaring in your face or beeping at you or anything like that. They're just symbol notifications here and there. Got a nice classy looking front end here, simple but elegant. A little bit of texture here in the hood full LED headlights. These are very good at night, great visibility at night, and they have the auto high beams as well. Got your fog lights down here, a lot of sensors around here for the parking, a little bit of chrome for contrast, lots of venting up here at the top around the four rings, but this is all blocked off for some reason. It's the same way in the S3. Acts as a great bug catcher though, lots of bugs caught in there. And you got your inner cooler poking out underneath there because we do have a turbocharger in this one yeah just a nice classy simple elegant looking front end here from the side this is audi's compact crossover slotting in between the q3 and the q7 so we've got a nice compact 184 inches long with 111 inch wheelbase note how far out to the sides the wheels are how close they are to the two ends that's nice and long for that ex for that better ride quality more planted feeling in the corners and this one's sitting on 20s with continental cross contact sports here these are an all-season tire it, usually you would get 18s or 19s, but this has the 20s optioned. And honestly, if it were me, I'd probably go for the 19s because they're still pretty big. You still get a nice sporty look, um, but you get a slightly better ride quality because you get a thicker sidewall. And I don't, I'm just not a big fan of this particular design. From up close, you can tell that they're premium wheels, but from far away, I feel like they don't really look like they're premium. They look, just because of the color and the styling, they look like sort of standard wheels. I love the chrome trim all around to just kind of give it a little bit of flair here. This color is called District Green, and I'm not the biggest fan of this. I do usually love a green, but I'm not the biggest fan of this one. I'd probably go with the blue. I do like that blue color a lot. This does have Interestingly, it does have touch to lock and touch to unlock on both the front and the back doors. I haven't seen that on the back doors before. So you can actually unlock it from here and you can lock it from here, but it is definitely convenient. And these doors, the way they open, the handles open up, the whole handle comes up, which is kind of an interesting little quirk. These mirrors here, integrated turn signals, heated, blind spot monitoring the blind spot monitoring is on the inside rather than on the mirror itself uh, and interestingly if you want the side view mirror on the passenger side to tilt you have to set your mirror control over to the passenger side mirror so that's a little bit strange and those will fold in they won't fold in automatically there is a push of a button that you have to use if you want those to fold in we've got the s-line badge because this is uh, one of the sportier versions of the q5 and i like that they didn't go with black cladding we've got color matched wheel arches here this one does have the nice big pano sunroof and we've got the aluminum rails up top from the back end here again pretty simple and classy like the chrome trim all around just sort of gives it a little bit of flair and the way they did the exhaust tips as well nice big beefy exhaust tips um, and those are, you know just adds a little bit of flair we've got the full LED taillights here with an interesting sort of intricate 
design in there. Quattro logo, since this one is for, this is all wheel drive, that's all that Quattro means. And if you wanna open this thing up via the key, we've got a nice hefty key, always love to see that. And the button right there for that. This is gonna give you 25.9 cubic feet of space. This is pretty big uh, for something this size. And we've got the privacy cover as well. 40, 20, 40 split on the seats with some pulls to pull those down, some hooks on the side as well. A little bit of cart, some cargo nets, some straps, really a lot going on back here. And for the child anchors, we've got the actual insert there and not just the cloth hanging over it. Always love to see that. Underneath this cargo tray, this one has the cargo tray optioned. We do have a spare tire down there. Interior wise here, we've got sort of a mix of you know, clear cost cutting as well as some things that are just very nice and some things that are kind of quirky. Um, so it's sort of a strange interior, but overall it's a really nice place to be. Like up here, you know, the materials up here, they're soft plastics, but they don't look particularly nice. But then you've got the wood trim going around, which actually looks really nice. And you've got real aluminum door handles. You know, like all the touch points are nice. The leather wrap steering wheel, leather wrap shift knob. We do have a bunch of gloss black right here. Other than that, there's not too much gloss black, which is good. Um, but that one giant swath here, I could do without that. The steering wheel, as I mentioned, leather wrapped. It's thin, it's very comfortable. It's nice, it's got heat on it. Uh, interestingly, when you hit the heat, it will let you know that the heat is on, but it won't, like other than that, there's no indicator. Like after, after it tells you that it turned on, there's no indication of whether it's on or off anymore. That's a little strange, but these buttons are nice and the scroll wheels as well. And there's a stock down below and I keep things off of the steering wheel, um, make it a little bit more sort of elegant. I don't know, the thinness makes me feel like it's sort of more elegant, a little fancier. I don't know why, but auto headlights, or your headlight controls over here, your heads up display controls over here off to the left. Very easy to adjust your heads up display. The heads up display is super crystal clear. It works really nicely. Speed, speed limit, it'll do your nav. If you are using the onboard nav, it does not work with the Android Auto, but it will work with the onboard nav. Seats here, pretty comfortable. This is the Okapi Brown. I'm sure that I'm pronouncing that wrong, um, but these are nice leather seats with thigh extensions, 10-way power adjustable, heated and ventilated, and you can actually turn those both on at the same time. Um, kind of strange, but glad that both of those are an option. It does have lumbar support, but I wish that the lumbar support got a little bit more aggressive, um, but otherwise generally very comfortable seats. And we've got memory settings to the side here. And actually if I turn this on, then it will adjust the wheel memory setting here as well. Above the wheel, nice clear gauge cluster. I like that they used the darker color. You know, I'm a dark mode guy. I feel like it's easier on my eyes. So I like, you know, mostly grays and blacks with some red and a little bit of texture, a little bit kind of made the numbers float a little bit. Um, and not a whole lot of information in here. Your driver's assist, your fuel economy. Then we've got our HVAC controls, all buttoned and knobs. And I like the little knurled knobs here, as well as the volume over here. It's a little interesting that it's all the way over off to the side um, and a left and right to switch your song. Parking assist up here as well. Your auto start stop, this one does have that feature. It's interesting though that these switches for the HVAC go up and down down below all the other switches just go down including one that has an up arrow so if you want to change your drive mode if you want to go down the list you press the down button down if you want to go up the list you press the up button down so a little bit strange i feel like that should be an up but it's just a little quirk this does have the three zone climate here uh, dual zone for the front and one for the back they've also got heated seats back there which is nice nice big infotainment screen Kind of tacked on looking a little bit, but I do like the way that Audi does their infotainment. You know, I, again, I like the dark mode kind of thing. I like that it's a black screen with just simple icons and big icons, big buttons, easy to find what you need. Uh, it is a little bit laggy, but, um, but overall it's very easy to use and easy to 
kind of get where you need to go. It does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay both wireless on this one. And the sound from that goes through a Bang & Olufsen sound system. Awesome, always love to see that. Bang & Olufsen are some of the better of the car stereos. Uh, that I've heard, so I, I really like the stereo in here a lot. The gear shift, again, a little bit of a strange, you know, you gotta get used to it, um, cause it locks back in the center, but it is what it is. Gear shift has its own little quirkiness, but everybody's doing their own thing on gear shifts these days. Push button start, no, no remote start. Audi does not do remote start, but there is push button start here. Electronic parking brake, we've got wireless charging pad, Drop your phone on there. It'll give you an indicator up here that says that your phone is charging. And if you want to get to the cup holders, you can just slide that out of the way. Your phone just ends up tucked under there. And under here, we have heated and cooled cup holder. I've never seen that before. So we have one regular cup holder and one heated and cooled one. If you want to keep your drinks hot or cold, maybe you just want to put some M&Ms in there and make sure they don't melt on a hot day or something. Whatever you want to do there. Interesting, lots of slots with rubber going on around this swath of gloss black and wood. Such a contrast between the nice wood and the gloss black. And then there's a little bit more space in there as well as USB-C. The back seats, we have 38 inches of legroom back there. I would not have guessed that. I don't know exactly how they measure that, but it does feel a little bit on the tight side, but it has been big enough for, uh, it's always big enough for me because I'm only five foot seven and me behind myself is totally fine. My kids in forward facing seats have been fine. though so my son's feet are a little bit closer to my seat than I would have liked. Rear facing seats are gonna be a little bit iffy. This one also has the blinds, the, the sun shades on the window, so that's cool. I like that you can get that from factory. Plus we've got this giant pano sunroof. Always a big fan of these giant sunroofs. And like I mentioned, heated seats back there as well. So as an overall kind of cabin space here, it is a very nice place to be. Just a few sort of quirky, uh, interesting things, but overall nice spot for sure. So as an overall experience in this last week, I actually, I really like this car a lot more than I expected to. Um, you know, it's got plenty of space for the family while still remaining comfortable for the daily drive and fun when you really want it to be fun. Plus it's got lots of great luxury features. Love the Bang & Olufsen sound system. Glad that you can now get that in the Premium Plus trim. Uh, it, it's got the quirks, like I mentioned, some like little quirky things, but I'm sure those are things that you get used to. Just as an overall car, I'm really pretty impressed with what you get here. Let me know what you think about this car down in the comments below and make sure to hit the like button, the share button, and all the YouTube, do all the YouTube things and make sure to stick around and check out what I got coming next week. Thanks for watching. See you next time.